Uh, when I came to the uh, meeting tonight, I wasn't quite sure what I was coming to. When I came through the door, I was left in no doubt at all. Um, I, it was entitled Jesus and Muhammad, and thank you for putting Jesus first. Um, I, I'm sure you'll accept that you did not put the case for Christianity as a Christian would put it. I'm sure you would, and that I can understand in an audience of this, this kind of authority, persuaded towards the Muslim way of thinking. Um, and uh, indeed, I, I would say that I, as an individual, would respect the Quran. Uh, I'm afraid you did not respect my holy book, which is the Bible, in quite the same way. In fact, I'm a teacher, and in my classroom, I've got a television which is fixed to the wall. And on the top of the television, there's just room to put the Quran, because I respect in my, my, I've got Muslim children in my school. And I put the high, I know you respect your book, but I put it in the highest place. So I do that. I put it in the highest place. Now, what I'm saying to you is this, you've not really ex, uh, given uh, in my opinion, anyway, the Christian loving and forgiving, these are the two essential things, although you denigrate forgiveness for some reason, uh, as highly as I would. But more than that, perhaps you answer this point. Um, Muhammad, you talked a lot about Jesus, you talked a lot about our Holy Book, we're not talking much about, the, about uh, Muhammad, or, or indeed the Quran too much, um, about the missionary aspect of it. Um, could you tell me how you can believe, indeed anybody in this room can believe, in one man who um, couldn't read, couldn't write, indeed uh, could get his followers uh, by bloodshed through war, uh, how you can believe that that man was a follower of God, let alone a prophet of God, uh, to, um, uh, and to accept all his teachings as you do so deeply, and yet reject Christianity and the holy book of Christianity so, so, so easily as well? You see, you have thrown in so many things in this little contribution of yours that how can we believe in a man who was illiterate and who by bloodshed, who had spread his faith, converted the people. Now with regards to the man being unlearned, this is a fulfillment of the prophecy in your book. A fulfillment. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 12. It says there, and the book is given to him that is not learned. The book, please, please. The book is given to him that is not learned, saying, read. And he says, I am not learned. Now, if you look for in the religious history of man, in the Bible, you will never find an occasion where any prophet of God, when given the message of God, he says, I'm not learned. But if you read any biography of Muhammad, any written by Muslims or non-Muslims, they will tell you that the first revelation that was given to him in Ghar Hira, the Mount of Hira, when the angel of God comes to him and commands him in his mother tongue, he says, Iqra, read. And Muhammad says, Ma ana He said, I'm not learned. So the angel of God commands him a second time, Iqra, read. And again he says, Ma ana He said, I'm not learned. For the third time, the angel of God embraces him hard and he says, Iqra, bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. Now he grasps the message that what he was required to do was to repeat. Because this Arabic word Iqra means to read, to recite, to rehearse, to repeat. And he repeats the words as they were given to him. Iqra, bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. Read in the name of the Lord and cherisher who created. Khalaq al insana min alak. Say, he who created man from a mere clot of congealed blood. Iqra wa rabbuka al akram. So read and the Lord is most bountiful. So he says, Iqra wa rabbuka al akram. Say, so, Allah zi allama bil kalam. Say, so, he who taught the use of the pen. Say, so, Allah zi allama bil kalam. Say, so, Allah al insana ma'alam ya'alam. Taught man that which he knew not. The very fact that the man is unlearned is a proof that this book is a book of God. Yes, <laughs> 